Hello and welcome to my channel about Unity development. In the last video, I'll talk about the new Unity addressable system. I mentioned how to instantiate a game object using the addressable API and touch base on the memory management about it. I did say to make the next video would be about groups and profiles, but I changed my mind because I think it's actually very important to get to know more about the memory management on the system before we go in depth into the addressable system more. In order to understand a bit more on the memory management, I'm going to show you a different way to instantiate a game object using an addressable API. First, using the last script that I created, I'm going to change the asset reference game object into asset reference only. Then I'm going to comment this session out like this. And inside the start function, I'm going to put addressable dot low asset and put in type as game object. And inside the round bracket, I'm going to put character like this. And at the end of the line, I'm going to put down dot complete and let Visual Studio to implement the function for me. And I will change the function name into low character asset async like this. I will remove this line inside the function as we definitely not need it and I will put down character object equals instantiate object dot result now let's go back to the inspector and sign the asset reference to the field and I hit play on the editor to test it this should give us the same result as we had before only this time we instantiate the game object after loaded the asset into the memory not loading and instantiate at the same time. I will show you what happened if I comment this line out, just to make sure it is not the same as what we had before in the last video. This should not instantiate any game object into the scene. However, as it is actually loaded into the memory, we can see it on the event viewer in here, like this. So what happened if we destroy the game object using the script that we had before? Let me show you. Remember that I have a function that will remove the game object when I press enter. When I destroy the game object, the game object get removed from the scene, but actually the memory is still allocated because the game object is not actually instantiated by using the addressable API. Let me show you how to fix this. In the script, I will create a new variable type async operation handle and put in the type as game object. The addressable.low asset async going to return async operation handle. I will make the changes like this. And at the end, instead of using addressable.release instance, I'm going to put addressable.release and put in the async operation handle variable that I just created on the top. So going back to the editor, let's just check everything before running the editor. And when I delete the game object by pressing enter, the memory will get removed as I actually release it by using addressable.release to release the async operation handle. Why is this important to know? Let's imagine you need to instantiate the same game object multiple times using the addressable API. Which method will you choose? To demonstrate it, I'm going to instantiate the game object five times using addressable.instantiate async. Then we will look at the event viewer. I'll put this line in the for loop like this and press play. So you can see when the game object is instantiated five times using this API, the asset actually loaded into memory five times. We can see those five blue bars in here. Now we are going to instantiate the game object five times using the other way, using adjustable low asset async method and we will play on editor and look at the event viewer and see what happened to the blue bars okay so as you can see instantiate game object five times using this way we we'll only make the asset to load into the memory once which means it is very ideal in a situation where you need to instantiate the same game object multiple times next Let's look at what happened to those memory when we change scene. I'm going to create a new empty scene and make a UI button to go into this scenes by clicking it from the previous scenes. Mm -hmm. 
To keep it simple, I'm going to change the scene by using low scene, A scene, and using single mode only. I am instantiating the game object using low asset async method. So focus on the event viewer and look at what happened after I changed the scene by clicking the button at the bottom left corner. So nothing changes on the event viewer. This indicates the memory still actually remain in the system even we change the scene. So I think the way to actually remove it is, is to use the addressable API and release the async operation handle in the on destroy method. This way, the memory will be released as this game object get destroyed, which is what I have done in here in this example. Now, if you look at the event viewer again, the blue bar will be no longer appeared as I press the button to change the scene. To really demonstrate in the case, I'm going to comment out the release method and let's see what happened to the memory. After a change scenes, the blue bar is still here. That means the only way to release memory using this method is to release it before changing the scene. The next one will be using the instantiate async method. And then we change the scene and see what happened to those memory. In this instance, not all the memory we get disallocated. So what would happen if we destroy the game object using addressable.release instance in the on destroy method and see if we get released it. Let's look at the event viewer and again not everything get released by doing this. I believe if you want to use addressable system, it is very important to pay extra attention on the memory management. For more information about it, you can go to the documentation from Unity, which I will leave the link in the description below. I think they are still at very early stage of writing this document, as they even spell management wrong. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit a like on this video. See you later, bye!